This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Randy Pizer. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I'm enjoying a wonderful blizzard in uh, Nevada. Oh my, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. That isn't nice, isn't it? It's beautiful, though. It's just, it's quite beautiful. All right, all right. So, I, I, I'll rather imagine than experience it physically for some reason or the other. <laughs> yeah, if you can handle nine degrees. Of yes, weather. I'll definitely but, take the yeah. virtual picture. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. Well, this particular talent has to do with a great passion that I have, which is getting first time authors and experts and just professionals or people who want to be viewed as professionals. And I get people book deals with the New York publishers. Where do I sign up? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll just share with you, I'm, I'm very, very good at it. Uh, right now, I have five books that just came out, uh, like a business book just came out through McGraw-Hill called Great Mondays, and it's about building one's company culture. I had four publishers offered contracts on it. I had a mind-body-spirit book that just came out called Structural Integration and Energy Medicine. Hmm. I have a gift book that just came out called Life in a Word. I have a middle-grade reader that just came out called Red, Red Stocking Society. And I had a paranormal fiction that just came out called Red Mittens. So I help people, and usually first-time authors, um, really get great book deals with great publishers. And very passionate about it. This is fun for me. Well, that definitely unpacks an uh, integrity aspect of who you are, I am guessing. Uh, how do you function in that? And who did you learn that from? Well, in integrity, I think, is just it's an inborn trait. For me, my definition of integrity is that my words and my actions must match. And when I'm speaking with people, I listen to what they say, and then I observe what they do. Hmm. And I, I want to know that their words and actions match. That's really important to me. Hmm. And another thing I'm very proud of is that I'm on faculty of CEO Space International, and in order to teach about how to get a book deal with a publisher, everyone actually who's on faculty there has to go through um, a process of scrutiny and there is actually a directory online called the Clear Business Directory. Hmm. And I am listed in there because <laughs> they scrub the web, they scrub data from everywhere to make sure that everyone who is uh, teaching at CEO Space is completely on the up and up. And I'm, I'm very proud of that distinction. Well done. Well done. Well, where's the best place for someone that's listening to connect with you? The easiest way is through my website, which is authoronestop.com. And the one is spelled out O-N-E, authoronestop.com. Hmm. I do tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Something that I do consistently is that for every single manuscript, before I'm going to pitch it, <laughs> fly to New York or go via email or whatever and pitch anything to a top agent or publisher, I want to know that that project is stellar. So we do an analysis of it first, a read-through and analyze it. Is it strong enough? What does the author need to do to strengthen the manuscript? Do we think it's potentially sellable to a publisher? Because I never want to waste anyone's time or their money. Hmm. I'm not about that at all. I love to get people book deals, but it's got to be a really strong book. And I have an editorial team where we help <laughs> a lot of authors create stronger books. Hmm. I can well imagine. So is there a pre-model uh, where you also, uh, like, you provide the author? So, okay, like, let's say I want to be published, and I'm thinking, okay, what are the prerequisites? Would you give an author that coaching to so that he comes pre-prepped then, like he has the finished yes. product? Yes. In fact, I tell people there are two parts to the conversation about getting a publisher. One of the parts has to do with your 
content, but another part has to do about the business of publishing, Hmm. because you can have the best content in the world, but if you're not meeting the criteria that publishers are looking for that have to do around more business aspects that really are not about your content, then you can lose the deal. Hmm. So, I help people to understand and strengthen the business part that publishers need to see in order to get that book deal. I can well imagine how much fun it is for you seeing those books up on the shelves, understanding the input that you had in it. Uh, Well, I'm guessing, right? How does it make you feel? Well, I'll tell you how fun it is. I was in the San Jose airport, you know, it's a Silicon Valley airport. And there's two of my author's books at the airport book stand at the Hudson Booksellers. Hmm. Adrenaline Nation was one of them. Pivot is another one. Uh, And and it's just really exciting to just be in in a store somewhere and just see front and center there are my author's books. Or to walk into a FedEx store. FedEx, you know, only carries a handful of books throughout all their stores, and two of them are my clients' books. That's exciting and fun to me. Definitely, definitely. As well for the author, right? Like, I mean, one, like my wife always says, you know, she wants to see her books in a bookstore. Self-publishing does have its value, but there's something about seeing your book on the traditional uh, bookshelf, isn't it? Amazing audience, well, we are live again with Randy Pizer. Randy, let's switch gears for a moment now. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Randy, what is your earliest childhood memory? My earliest memory of all time is lying next to my mother on my little twin bed and I was about two and a half years old and I put my hand on her tummy and felt the baby kick. (laughs) Why do you think this memory is so clear? Yeah, it's really something because my brother was born when I was two and a half years old. So it was, this was like maybe a week before his birth. And I guess it was such a profound experience to feel kicking inside my mommy's tummy. (laughs) How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? How does that reconnect me? How do you see it reconnecting? Well, did did I say reconnecting? How do you see it connecting to who you are today? (laughs) Well, it's really something because I'm incredibly close with my brother. And so, you know, here I was already connected with him before birth. Hmm. That is amazing. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that memory? I love the fact that you are that person who has taken the position of being right there before the baby is born, metaphorically for books, for authors. Authors are the carriers, and uh, when they're pregnant with this book, it's so intriguing that you prepare the space for the best growth of the author's book. And that looks like getting them published. Well, you actually hit the nail on the proverbial head because one of the things that I say when I speak, and I speak quite a lot, I tell people, a book is more than words on a page. It's your dream, and I get to help you birth your dream. Mm -hmm. So the the birth metaphor is definitely there. Another thing that I tell people, sometimes people will say, well, I want my book done in three weeks or, you know, three months or whatever it is, (laughs) and then I want it sold, and, and I tell people, your book will always have its way with you. You may think you know it's birthing time, but you you don't. <laughs> hmm. They come through. They have their own birthing cycles. They just do. Hmm. Love it. Love it, Randy. If we fast forward to when yeah. you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? My favorite song was Sunrise, Sunset from Fiddler on the Roof. Hmm. Love it. It was very um, emotional. Uh, connects me to my Jewish heritage. Hmm. You, know, you know what's really, really funny is that I wrote one of the books I wrote is called The Power of Miracle Thinking. And a TV host once said to me, Randy, you were born Jewish, your books are spiritually eclectic, and you speak in churches. And how do you account for all this? And I said, same God, different rapper. (laughs) So (laughs) I speak for all different kinds of services. I've delivered lots of different kinds of sermons. Mm Randy, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? 
Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Randy, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Who do I choose to pass my skills oh, sorry, on to? No. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes or no? I, no. Are you married? No. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what about screen Netflix, time? Netflix, if Netflix counts. <laughs> <laughs> what about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Uh, probably on um, because I'm an editor and I'm editing during the day, I would say probably eight hours or more a day. All right, Randy, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Randy Pizer, what would you say that is? I succeed because I do what I do and I don't do what I don't do. I have no need to do what anyone else does. I only do what I do. And if I create something that I like, great, but it's all an experiment. So I just go out there and experiment. Hmm. That's great. Randy, again, great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? <laughs> um, there's something that I call the hiccup of hesitation. And the hiccup of hesitation is when we're going for whatever our dream is, but we've got that little, <gasps> that little hiccup there. And what I tell people is step through it. Just step through it. Take your, take your right foot and just lead forward and just go. Hmm. Do it. Just notice where those hiccups are and just tell yourself, go, and just move forward in the direction of your dreams. Randy Pizer, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12-Minute Convos of Angel Jones. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.